Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message this morning is from 1 John 5, 11 through 15, where the Apostle John writes these words. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son of God has not life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. That's our text. Well, I wanted to do this sermon last Sunday, but the Lord said no. But this Sunday, the Lord said yes. It was June of 1988. Mom and Dad had just finished the first full year of their retirement. Right after they retired, they bought a small motor home and they crisscrossed the United States enjoying the beauty of God's creation, especially in the Western states. But now it was June of 1988 and everything changed. We got a late night call from mom that dad had suffered a stroke and uh, she wanted us to come. She said, you don't have to come until the next morning. So. Cheryl and our two young girls and I all went up to Saginaw, to St. Luke Hospital to visit Dad. And we were concerned, but we weren't panicked because Mom said the doctors had told her that Dad had an 80% chance of a full recovery. So we stayed with him for the next, the next couple of days at St. Luke Hospital in Saginaw before going home to, to Rochester. But then two nights later, we got another call from Mom. Another late night call, and this time it was more urgent. She said, Jim, you need to come to Saginaw. Dad took a turn for the worse. The doctors had told mom that dad now wasn't expected to make it through the night. And so I called my two brothers, one from Grand Rapids and one from Westland, and we got there as soon as we could. We got there just a little bit after midnight. And we surrounded dad's bed, he was in a coma. And even though the doctor said there's 0% chance that he'll recover, we knew that if we asked the Lord, and if it was the Lord's will to heal dad, we knew that that would be a 100% chance of his recovery. And so that's what we did. We surrounded his bed and we prayed all night long. And dad did make it through the night, but he died shortly thereafter in the next morning. In today's text, the Apostle John states that if we ask for anything according to God's will, he hears us. So here's the question I have for you this morning. Did God hear our prayers concerning dad? And if he did, did he answer them? Well, some people would say that God didn't answer our prayers, but if that's what they said, they would be mistaken. Because God did answer our prayers, but his answer was no. And I have a question for you this morning. Is no an answer? In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus pleaded with his heavenly Father, Father, if there's another way to save mankind, if there's another way besides the torture of the cross, Father, take this cup from me. But there was no other way. The Lord answered Jesus' prayer, no. There was no other way. And so Jesus said, your will be done. In the Old Testament, King Hezekiah and his good friend Isaiah were in a bad predicament. They were trapped inside the city of Jerusalem, surrounded by a massive Assyrian army. This Assyrian empire was rising to power with a huge army and they had already taken over the northern kingdom of Israel picking off city after city after city, showing absolutely no mercy to any of them. And after they took over Israel, they continued south and started doing the same thing to Judah, picking off city after city until they finally got back to the final city of Jerusalem, where the army had Hezekiah and Isaiah and the people of Jerusalem surrounded and trapped like a bird in a cage. And they knew there was a 0% chance of them escaping, this massive army. 
And so they did the only thing that they could do. Isaiah and Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. Lord, please, this army is mocking you. They say that our God doesn't listen to us. Lord, deliver us from this army and we'll glorify you. Well, guess how the Lord answered that one? He answered it yes. And the Lord sent the angel of the Lord to help. The pre-incarnate Son of God came and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. And you can read about that in Isaiah chapter 37. Jesus urges us, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So Hezekiah, after he got this great deliverance, he goes from a very high point in his life back down to the pits because he got deathly sick. And the Lord sent his good friend Isaiah to him and said, Hezekiah, get your things in order. You're going to die. And Hezekiah said, Lord, I need more time. Our country's in a shambles. Please, Lord, give me 15 more years. And guess what the Lord did? He gave Hezekiah 15 more years. I sometimes wonder if Hezekiah shouldn't ask for 20. But he got 15 more years. And I really believe that if Hezekiah would not have asked for those 15 more years, I don't think he would have gotten it, even though that was the Lord's will for him. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. If we ask for something, and if what we ask is in accordance with God's will, we're going to receive it 100% of the time. But when we ask for physical blessings, we should probably include the phrase, if it be your will, or in Jesus' name. Remember, God will answer all of those prayers, but he's going to answer it either yes or no, or yes but later. Remember, no is an answer. The Apostle Paul had some sort of a physical ailment. He called it his thorn in the flesh. And I've always thought that was his eyesight because he gives us clues of that in his epistles. Three times Paul asked the Lord to take away that thorn in the flesh. And all three times the Lord answered him, no. He said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you because my power is made perfect in weakness. God answers all of our prayers. And sometimes he uses people or circumstances. In my last sermon, I told you that I started out my college career to become a veterinarian. Some of you might wonder, why did you change into church work? Well, I'll tell you. When I was at Michigan State, a sophomore there, I had a 3.3 something GPA. And you needed at least a 3.2 to even be considered for vet school after your sophomore year. But when I was at Michigan State, for the first time in my life, I was exposed to lots of unbelievers. I had kind of lived a sheltered existence up to then. And I got a wit to witness to a lot of people, and I enjoyed it. And I was wondering, do I really want to be a veterinarian? Where there were 700 kids that wanted to get into 100 slots, in other words, there were more of us than they really needed. Or do I go into church work where there's a, a shortage of workers right now? Well, I didn't just want to give up on veterinary, so I prayed a kind of a Gideon-type prayer to the Lord. I said, Lord, if you want me to stay in this, help me to get at least a 3.2 GPA. Well, I was taking a really hard class that semester, biochemistry, at least for me, I was struggling. I was trying my hardest, but I ended up getting a C in the class. And that brought my GPA down to a 3.199. And so I transferred to Concordia, Chicago, which is kind of what I wanted to do anyway. I like listening to Christian radio, especially WMUZ in Detroit. I listened to the afternoon talk show, Bob Duco, who is a Christian apologetic, apologetics person. And he dealt with one of those Gideon moments himself, 
he had a really good job, a lucrative job. And he got contacted by WMUZ. They wanted him to be their new radio host. And Bob wasn't sure what to do. So he asked the Lord for a sign. He said, Lord, if you want me to go to WMUZ, give me a sign. He was driving down I-75 at the time. And he said, have a bird poop on my windshield. Driver's side. Well, folks, I've never had that happen to me. The only time it ever happens to me is when my car is parked underneath a tree. But sure enough, two minutes later, plop, right on the driver's side. And Bob thought to himself, no, there's no way. He said, Lord, if it's really you, do it again. <laughs> but this time on the passenger side. And as he was driving down I-75, he looked up and there was a flock of birds. And sure enough, two minutes later, plop, right on the passenger side. Bob's been at WMUZ for the last 20 years. And when he, when he told that story to his wife, she said, Honey, that is a wonderful story. But next time, couldn't you ask the Lord to have a $100 bill get caught underneath your windshield wiper? God works in mysterious ways, and he answers all of our prayers, either yes, no, or yes, but later. But there is one kind of prayer that God always answers yes, and that's when we ask for forgiveness. When we ask for forgiveness, we don't have to say, if it's your will, because we know it's God's will. And another thing that we know is God's will is that we have eternal life. The Bible says God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And John said it this morning, this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. This life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who has not the son of God has not life. So God's ultimate goal for you is that you have eternal life through Jesus. God wants all of us to be part of his family through faith in his son. You know, when dad was on his deathbed there at St. Luke Hospital in Saginaw, we prayed that God would give us more time with dad, give mom more time with dad, physically heal dad. Well, God answered our prayer, yes and no. For the physical healing part, the answer was no. And we're not sure why, but we trust in God's no. You know, maybe if dad would have survived, he would have lived the rest of his life with severe physical ailments. Maybe he would have lived the rest of his life in a nursing home. And if you know my dad, I, he would have hated that. He would have hated it. And so God answered our prayer, no. And we trust him for that. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm glad we asked. Because if we wouldn't have asked, I would still be wondering to this day, I wonder if we would have asked, I wonder if God would have said yes. But we just never asked. Well, now we don't have to wonder. Because we asked and we got an answer. But God did answer part of our prayer, yes. Dad was healed. Just not the way we thought. Dad is perfectly healed right now in the presence of his Lord and Savior, Jesus. And folks, if you know my dad, that was his ultimate goal. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God wants you to talk to him every day in prayer. He wants you to ask for physical blessings. But ask in Jesus' name, according to his will. Sometimes he'll answer your prayers, yes. And sometimes he'll answer no. But know this, the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who empowered the apostles on that first Pentecost, that Holy Spirit will help you to trust in his answer, whatever that might be. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which goes beyond human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.